So I think I found the cause of my dinos, so let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Serif. So I'm gonna get straight into it. So I think I figured out why I had dinos. Of course I might be wrong, I can't be 100% sure, but I am quite positive that this is the reason why. And the reason is because of my nitrate test kit. So I'm using the NIOS nitrate test kit and I'm not saying anything bad about the brand or the product. It could very well be that test kit in itself or how I did the test that caused the inaccuracy. But what had happened is that my nitrate had been showing up at around 15 ppm with that test kit and I decided to lower it to around 10 ppm which in most cases is quite a comfortable range. But recently, when I started using the high range nitrate henna checker, I realized that my nitrate was at 1 ppm. So that was such a big discrepancy between 10 and 1 ppm. So what I did was that I took out both my test kits at the same time and I did the same test on the same time with the same water and what had happened is that my NIOS test kit actually showed 10 ppm while my henna nitrate showed 1.2 ppm. So I can't be 100% sure but I do think that my nitrate is much lower than I expected because of what I had followed which is my NIOS nitrate test kit. During the period when the dyno started to show, I remember doing a video stating that I needed to clean my glass less and I thought it was related to the aqua forest coral food. But in hindsight, it could very well be due to my low nutrients and my low nitrates in this case. They were maybe bottoming out and thus there was no algae on the glass and I just didn't notice it. So what I have done since then is that I slowly increase my nitrates in my test kit and I also send my water for an ICP test. Currently at this stage, I'm not sure whether it's closer to 1.2 ppm or 10 ppm but I'm just hoping that with the ICP I'll be able to get some form of accuracy and consistency when my test results are back. That being said, I do generally feel that having a slightly elevated nitrate might not be the worst thing like in a sense that maybe you might have a little bit of algae that might grow but I find it hard to say that having it lower is better than higher also I, I don't really have a take home lesson in this because I, I do believe that for most of us having one test kit and testing it on a consistent basis is quite a hassle already so to ask anybody to have another test kit just to make sure your first test kit is accurate is quite a big ask but I mean of course if you have the means to or if you have a lot of corals in your tank having two test kits can't really do any harm it's just like having multiple salinity checker just to make sure that everything is in check I think the principle here is that testing your water is so crucial so that's something that you wouldn't really want to save on on the bright side, it has been clear that my dinos over the weeks have been slowly clearing up. So my snails have been eating the dino, di, diatoms on the sand bed and it has been getting brighter and brighter each day. I do believe that there are still traces of dinos still around but definitely lesser in numbers. Hopefully as time passes, the sand will go back to its norm which is its pristine white and everything goes back to normal. At this stage, I'm still dozing silicate, so um, I don't plan to stop until I'm quite certain that about 98 to 99% of all the dinos are gone. Another update is that I've moved some of the scollies to my other tank because they don't really seem to be doing too well on my tank. Started with just a couple of them not doing too well, but generally now most of them are not doing well. I can only attribute it to either one or two things, either the increase in the nutrients or the dosing of the silicates. They were under rather unhappy so I decided to move them to the other tank and hopefully they do better there. I suspect that the growth of the diatoms might be the cause of them being unhappy but I can't be totally sure if it's the nutrients, the diatoms or both. Also another update which is rather sad or might be a good thing is that I have actually removed two of my torches and what I did with them was that I traded them for store credits because there's just not enough space 
for my torches anymore. I noticed that some of them started to sting one another, so I don't have space to place them in another location or in another tank. So I decided to just sell them off for some store credits. I have also moved a couple of them around and hopefully that gives them a little more space and a little more breathing room from each other. It's crazy that now with the increase in nutrients in my tank, my corals are having kind of like a growth spurt. And even though I'm struggling with dinos, they are still growing great. And in fact, many of them have been growing much better than when I was having lower nutrients. I think one thing that I am watching out for also with my elevated nutrients is that um, I'm hoping that the dinos do not just suddenly die off. I think that's one of my greatest worry that there's a sudden die off and that leads to a spike in the nutrients and potentially crashing my tank. So I'm currently testing my nutrients every two days, sometimes three days if I don't have the time just to be extra sure. Hopefully in due time the dinos will die off and I can give you an update or a new video titled How I Beat Dinos. So I think that wraps up the video right here. Hope it has been helpful with you on this series of how I've been dealing with dinos and hopefully you've been enjoying my videos as well. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts, questions or advice. With that, I think I'll end my video right here. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, love your tank. Till next time, see ya.